will be that vector. Okay, let's now move on to do another one. All right, I want you to do a quick check. Charge Q acts as a point charge to create an electric field. Its trend measured at a distance of 30 centimeter is 40 newton per coulomb. What is the electric field strength at a distance of 90 centimeter from the charge? Well, I have a charge Q placed at a point and I measured the electric field due to that charge 30 centimeter away from it and I got the field as 40 newton per coulomb. Now the question is, use that information to find the electric field at a distance 90 centimeter away from it. Tell me, will the field at this 90 centimeter be greater or smaller than the field at 30 centimeter away from the charge? Well, the field at that point will be much weaker. Well, let's see how we can do that. If E1 is the field at 30 centimeter away from this charge, can you write an equation for E1? E1 is the electric field at a distance 30 centimeter away from a charge Q. Electric field at a point is KQ divided by R squared. So E1 is KQ divided by R. R is 30 centimeter, 0.3 square. So I have E1 equal to KQ divided by 0.3 square. All right, if E2 is the electric field at 90 centimeters away, can you write an equation for E2? Well, you can. E2 equal to KQ divided by 0.9 square. Well, what are we supposed to find? We know E1, we need to find E2. Well, you can do it in many ways. You can solve for KQ from there. KQ is E1 times 0.3 squared and put it here in place of this KQ and calculate that E2. That is one way. Another way I'm going to show you is because I want you to practice this mathematical manipulation. Another way is divide this equation by this equation. E2 divided by E1. You see that? E2 divided by E1 is this quantity divided by this quantity. You know when you divide by a fraction, you reverse and multiply. Is that right? That's what I've done here. Look at this. E2 divided by E1 is KQ divided by 0.9 squared. And instead of now dividing by this, I'm going to multiply with its reciprocal. Multiply 0.3 squared divided by KQ. Do you understand that? E2 divided by E1 is this quantity divided by this quantity and division by a fraction is the same as multiplication by its reciprocal. That's what this is. What's the advantage? You can see now KQ and KQ will cancel. So E2 over E1 is 0.3 squared divided by 0.9 squared and that is 0.11. If E2 divided by E1 is 0.11, what is E2 equal to? E2 is E1 multiplied by 0.11. There you are. And you know E1. E1 is 40 Newton per coulomb. So that will be 0.11 times 40 Newton per coulomb. And that is 4.4 Newton per coulomb. A very important concept. Okay, let's do another problem. We will now look at motion of point charges in electric field. You see, you know that 
if you place a charge in an electric field, it will experience a force and therefore it will move. Just like you place the basketball in the gravitational field, it will experience a force and will move. All right, let's talk about that now. Since a point charge placed in an electric field experiences a force, it will accelerate and hence move. Tell me, if a charge Q is placed in an electric field E, what is the force experienced by that charge? We talked about it several times already today. If a charge Q is placed in an electric field E, the force the charge will experience will be F equal to Q times E. When a, for when a charge Q is placed in a field E, the force it will experience is F equal to Q times E. Now, but the force experience, the net force on an object will produce an acceleration. Newton's second law of motion tells us that F must be equal to MA. That means this Q times E must be equal to mass times acceleration. So I can say, I can solve from here, if F equal to MA, then A equal to F over M, there you are, and replace this F by Q times E. Now we'll get acceleration of a charged object of mass M carrying a charge Q columns in an electric field E. Will you, if you replace this F by Q times E, you get A equal to QE divided by M. And I'm going to write it as Q over M multiplied by E. A very important relation. When an electric charge Q that has a mass M is placed in an electric field E, it will experience an acceleration. And the acceleration is given by Q over M times E. Okay. A positive charge will experience a force in the direction of the field and a negative charge will experience a force opposite to the direction of the field. Well, that must be very clear by now. Let's do a small problem. An electron 